things. All right, we're going to call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. My notes. It's 6.30 on January 26, 2023. Roll call. Ben McDougal. Here. Mike Stein. Here. Jason Greenlee. Here. I'm Nick Rico, chairman. Approval of the minutes from the December regular monthly meeting. Thank you, Jade. Second. Thank you, Pat. Any corrections? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. All right, superintendent's report. Let's see. That's better. <coughs> A copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of December has included your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.75 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We uh, averaged 97% BOD removal and 99% TSS removal uh, for concentrations of 6 and 3 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of December is included in your packet. No concerns were noted. Attached is the annual summary of our operations. Last year, we treated 509 million gallons of wastewater, from which we removed 96% and 99% of BOD and TSS. A summary of the past uh, years uh, follows in the table I provided. Using this, I, I calculated the cost of conveying and treating wastewater last year. Uh, we averaged about one cent per gallon. This is based on the total flow treated in our 2022 year end projection budget, including operation, debt service, and capital expenditures. In 2022, we continued to haul our Duard sludge off site. Uh, we hauled a uh, total of 2,353. Uh, wet tons, um, and the total cost was $251,422.89. Um, let's see, this past year there are two events of plug pumps at our pump stations, one of which were attributed to wipe. So the, these numbers have gone down ex uh, extremely from when I first started here. And when I first started, the First couple of years, we were up in the 22, 28 uh, number of events, and uh, now we, we're way down to um, just two this past year. We've ordered in budget, the budgeted heat pump for the garage. We have also ordered the odor control system for the sludge building. Nick and I attended the uh, Maine Environmental uh, Environment Association annual, annual legislature's breakfast, where um, we invite the legislators to breakfast and present uh, on current topics and provide an opportunity for the legislatures to ask questions. We received a third results of effluent PFAS sampling, which the state is conducting. The total PFAS measured was 66 nanograms per liter. Um, a summary of these results are below. I, I actually have since received one more result um, for January. And that number actually is zero, undetectable. Um, and what we feel is, was the issue was we were getting on where the sampling point is. There was a short little hose that was connected to the sample port. And Josh noticed it and, uh, and identified it as a potential contamination, took it off, and uh, the number became undetected. So um, it, PFAS is, analysis is easily contaminated. So you really got to take great pains in order to avoid cross-contamination. Uh, and oh, a couple other things. Um, Josh attended his first uh, uh, New England uh, Wastewater Association meeting in Boston. I used to, was down there a couple couple nights, right? No, yeah, two nights. And uh, the we haven't had one at the uh, treatment plant, but here at the Scarborough facility, there was what, what's called a First Amendment audit, where somebody comes in in a fairly aggressive fashion. Uh, 
uh, asking questions of people as they photograph their reactions, looking for get uh, um, uh, some bad reactions and, and uh, put it on YouTube to get a bunch of clicks. Um, fortunately, nothing, nobody uh, really uh, bit here in Scarborough and nothing happened of it. Uh, as a result of it, I actually did put up a sign at the, as you walk into the facility, to our admin building that says no authorized uh, people beyond this point. And no the, unauthorized. No unauthorized <laughs> people beyond this point. Um, so that, you know, really confines them just to the lobby area and Serena. That's what I have. I... All right. So we have superintendent's report. Any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Mike. I got it. I, <coughs> I should know this, but what's the permit limit for BOD and TSS? 30, 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I like the one cent per gallon for the cost treatment. Do you, do you trend that over the years? Yeah, I do. Is that? That's, uh, we, it's, it, it's actually gone up to, a, to one cent per gallon. We were typically. Oh. Uh, Mike, please turn your mic on when you ask a question. You can ask the question again. That would help. Okay. Um, what was the question? No. Uh, this uh, cost of treatment for one cent per gallon, do you trend that? Uh, yes, we do. I've been doing it since I've been superintendent, and it's um, this year is actually the first time that it has actually reached a penny per gallon with the increased cost of sludge dewatering and electricity. Prior to this year, it's usually ran about seven tenths of a cent per, per gallon. Okay. Um, and, and I have one more question. Um, the pump station plug history, uh, obviously, the data shows that the number caused by wipes is going down. Is that, you think that's contributed to public education or, or what? Uh, I think it's a number of things. In the early, early time frame, I did do a lot of uh, public educations and we have sent out those uh, documents. Um, and I, I do think that does help and um, people are becoming more aware of that. Uh, we also changed some of the styles of our pumps where they're running faster. And I think that also helps. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for Dave? Okay, we'll go on to correspondence. Annual audit engagement letter. Attaches a copy of the en uh, engagement letter uh, with Willett and Associates. Um, We'll be conducting our annual audit as described in their letter. Okay. No old business, new business. Okay. Do we need a motion to add something to the agenda? Yes, you do. All right. Before we go on to new business part A, I'd like a motion to add a new business part C, WWTF generator. I'll entertain a motion for that one. Motion to add item C to the agenda. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. All in favor? None opposed. All right, we can go to item 7A, which is AR building, Mussey Road, multifamily development. It okay. looks like we have someone to present something to us. Yes. Shy. Yes, so on, on behalf of AR Building, the Petrie Engineering requested district approval for 120 unit apartment development consisting of 10 apartment buildings, a clubhouse as presented in the submittal documents. Uh, the requested flow is for 200 gallons per day per dwelling unit. In addition, an additional 200 gallons per day was added to the requested flow for the clubhouse which is in line with the usage of the clubhouse at the Beacon Apartments on Hydes Parkway. 
I recommend approval with the following conditions. The wastewater flow allocation is limited to 24,200 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows more than the allotment or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. The 24,200 gallons per day of wastewater flow is fully subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. Current capacity reserve fee is $19.15 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Um, based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $471,900. Any flows more than the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. And a submeter shall be installed to meter the water use of the clubhouse from which the clubhouse sewer bill we, will be based. Uh, as I said, as you noted, there is a representative here that um, will take some questions mm -hmm. and make a presentation as he so desires. Cool. So if you don't mind introducing yourself and where you work and Move forward with what you have on the easel. Sure. Is this a good spot for the easel? What's that? Is this a good spot for the easel? Yes. Okay. My name is Brian Walsh with Dupree Engineering. I am presenting a residential development at the corner of Musty Road and Gorham Road. Uh, starting as you enter the site, you pass through the upper row of the site. This is on an upper shelf along the frontage of the main roads, and you drop to a lower shelf of the site. This follows the natural topography of the site. Towards the rear of the site, we have a proposed wet pond to handle stormwater flow. We have DEP approval uh, for this project. And uh, I bring up the shelves of the site because it has to do with sewer. So switching over to the utility sheet. In close coordination with Josh Roy, uh, we have finalized the uh, sewer layout for the upper five buildings, including the clubhouse, to connect to the sewer manhole a little, a little lower on the trunk line. Through the existing sewer trunk line that passes through the site is, uh, is about 16 feet deep, and we're going to connect the first five buildings into the lower and the lower shelf will connect into the other sore manhole you see here. Unfortunately, I don't have a plan that shows all the utilities on one overall sheet right now, so if you have the plans in front of you, otherwise I can switch over. I did forget to mention that the district has an easement through this property where we have a um, a collection sewer that, that uh, runs in between the uh, proposed buildings um, cross country now, and uh, they've done a good job working around that easement. And where exactly is this site? Mussy Road? Is this by Eight Corners? Eight Corners. Yep. Across from, is it Joe's Cafe with those ciabatta sandwiches? St. Joe's. St. Joe's, yep. Yeah, those are great sandwiches. Right on that corner right there. Near eight corner school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And with the site being wooded and undeveloped at the time, I think it made a lot more sense for the gravity sewer to run right through the site. So that was a uh, main focus in our site layout, trying to make sure that the easement was, uh, that the disturbance of the easement was minimized, but also the additional fill on top of that easement and on top of that existing sewer line was minimized as well. How are you connecting to the sewer manholes? We are connecting via uh, internal drop on the lower sewer manhole, which carries the upper shelf of the site. And I believe the drop there is about four feet. And, and the same with the other sewer manhole, but I believe that drop is only about a foot and a half. Cool. Uh, I, I made a misstep. I started asking questions. We really shouldn't discuss it till there's a motion. Motion to approve. Forward. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate Second. it. Thank you, Jason. All in favor? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. 
Uh, now we can ask questions. Are there any other questions for our guest, Mr. Walsh, here? Or me. Huh? Or, and, or Dave. Go ahead, Ben. I, I was just wondering if you could explain the water usage in the clubhouse and how the submeter is going to work. Uh, not my expertise. However, okay. I do know that there was close coordination with the MEP department and or with the, our MEP engineers and uh, Portland Water to establish the meter room within the clubhouse. And that is to Portland Water Department spec. Uh, it's undergone several iterations and they've settled on a meter room designed for that. Uh, in terms of introducing flows into the source system from that clubhouse, uh, the intended use is a fitness room and a swimming pool external to the building. Uh, we've decided a good estimate for that use would be 200 gallons per day as a standard single unit residence. That matches uh, the Beacon Apartments. They have a similar arrangement, an outside pool with the in internal uh, clubhouse, meeting area, exercise room, showers, and the it seems uh, that's uh, and um, that's a much uh, bigger apartment complex. So, so do they do they use a lot of water on the exterior? So they're kind of splitting their flow. Is that why there's a submeter necessary versus just a primary meter? Well, the the one primary meter that feeds the site, and we we bill residential units on a. Um, a flat rate basis. We don't monitor the flow. So the overall flow for the facility is essentially irrelevant to us. And so the submeter uh, for the clubhouse being a not a residential unit, their bill is based on actual water usage. So we had to um, uh, establish a way to measure that flow, almost okay. like a commercial building. Okay. So it's really the main water meter for, yeah. the, for that building. For but, that building. but we're calling it a sub-meter. Yep. I get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Any for taking that. Uh, yes, go ahead, Mike. Is your mic on? It is now. <laughs> um, so the, there's no cooking facilities inside the clubhouse, is there? No. Okay. Um, I think my next question is is geared towards the uh, superintendent. So this obviously flows to the non-such pump station. Yep. And obviously that has plenty of capacity yep. for this. How much, do you know off the top of your head how much more capacity that might have? Or, or maybe what capacity is it operating at? I don't know those numbers okay. off the top of okay. my head, Mike. Okay. Wow, well, you know what the flow is in December. Well, yeah, you get the yeah, December get flow. The, yeah, the <laughs> December flow for that station. In the right, but but what's the peak flow? The design flow. Uh, don't know. Yeah. Good question. And it has a brand new force main. At least most of it is. So it'll run real slick right through <laughs> that pipe. <laughs> Any other questions for the superintendent or for Brian? Firing none. All in favor? Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right, 7B is the budget summary. The 12 month budget summary is included in your packet. I do want to point out that the district has not been billed by the town for the completed force main replacement project at Route 114. I do expect this invoice shortly. I recommend approval. And the invoice would be for a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> Right, because right now you're at 65% spent, and it would bring it up yeah, higher than it's that. it's for... But well below 100%. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. I want to make that clear before yep. it's approved. All right. Again, I spoke out of turn. I will entertain a motion on the budget for 12 months. Motion to approve 12 months budget. Thank Senator. you, Jason. Thank you, Mike. Any questions on the 12 month budget summary? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Cool. That lines us up good for the next. I, I said that lines us up good for the next 
the topic. <laughs> yeah, so um, the new item on the agenda is item 7C, known as WWTF Generator. So. As I uh, let the trustees know on Monday via email, uh, we lost power at the wastewater treatment facility and the emergency generator failed to start. After several attempts, it was determined that it wasn't going to be able to get going, and uh, so we had to change gears and look at alternatives. Um, I called my contact at CMP and got them to put our outage on a high priority. Uh, Carl got a hold of Caterpillar, of the Caterpillar mechanic who dropped everything and came right out, and Josh and Phil and Jay started diverting flow into our offline tanks to store as much wastewater as on site as we could. Fortunately, CMP came through um, and got our commercial power back up and running by 9 a.m. And we, we had no overflow or fires or fire department visits. Um, unfortunately, the Caterpillar mechanic did say our generator <coughs> exciter uh, shredded a bunch of its copper and sent it through the windings of the generator itself. Um, we were able to get a rental generator on site and had it up and running by 1 p.m. that day. Uh, the cost of the rental unit is uh, $4,200 a week. The existing generator is 19 years old. It's a 500 kW Caterpillar with approximately 500 hours of runtime, which isn't much. Uh, the peak kilowatt demand at, at the plant this past year has been 297 kilowatts. Our average kilowatt draw is approximately 175. So uh, I've spent the last few days looking at our options and we're fortunate we actually do have several uh, for the board to consider and which I'll describe below. Uh, there's the repair of the existing generator. Um, as Caterpillar provided a $20,000 estimate to repair the generator. In addition to the cost, we do have the $30,000 uh, to upgrade its control panel, uh, which we had budgeted for this year. And that total cost uh, comes to about $50,000. I did go looking for any uh, uh, generators on site, uh, I mean, available, new generators that would be available to purchase. And the largest uh, generator uh, available to purchase would, was a 250 kW unit, which is located in Mass uh, Massachusetts. No, knowing that we downsized the motors at pump station six, from four 200 horsepower motors to four 75s, uh, and that it had a 750 kW generator. I had an electrical engineer look at the, the true generating needs for that station. She determined a 250 kW would run three pumps. I reviewed the CMP power bills for the past year and determined that our peak demand at this uh, pump station over the last year was uh, 94 kilowatts. So that would allow us to be an option of moving the generator uh, pump station six to the plant and install the new 250 K, uh, KW generator at six. Uh, this would involve utilizing a rigging company to move the plant's generator out and moving the pump station generator to the plant and all the ancillary work involved in these activities. In addition, we will uh, we actually would, we determined this since I wrote this, have to utilize an exterior fuel tank for a pump station six generator, does not have a belly tank like the existing um, uh, generator does, nor does the existing belly tank uh, fit underneath the, the proposed generator, or sixes generator. I initially had a total cost of $100,000 for this, um, option, uh, but I've, I, I had an assumed value for the 250 kW gen generator, um, and I literally just got a text uh, with a, a price on it, and that was $90, $93,000 for that generator. So uh, that value, that total estimate is probably up more around $125,000. The other option it would uh, be able to purchase two 250s uh, generated to the uh, treatment plant, and we could parallel those together to get the uh, the 500 kW that we need at the plant, and um, that uh, th that actually th that value of that uh, probably went up to to more like 225,000. 
So those, those are the three primary options that I identified as variations of those items there. I've been talking a lot with staff and um, what's involved uh, with each one of these. And um, I, it's, it's my recommendation right now that we actually move forward with repairing the existing generator. Um, it's about a two month process. And it, that should, that between the replacing the control panel and repairing the generator, we should easily get another uh, 10 to 15 years life out of that generator and uh, uh, be done with it. So the, lo the lowest cost option, when all this came, started unfolding, um, you know, I didn't know how much money I wanted to put into a generator, that generator being 19 years old, but the cost of everything has gone so f up so much, I think it is worth that effort. So I just wanted to get the board's approval to move in that direction and uh, or uh, answer any questions on that. I'll entertain a motion for the WWTF generator preferred option to repair existing generator. Uh, motion made to repair the existing generator at the cost uh, outlined here by, or the estimate outlined here by the superintendent. And, and mind you, these, these are fairly rough estimates at this point in time. This has been a moving target, so. Um, we're still waiting on information. Mike made the second call. Cool. All right, now we have the opportunity to open up the floor for questions. Question. Go ahead, Jason. Um, have we depreciated the value of that In our existing audit? generator? Yes. yes. It's fully depreciated. I don't know if it's fully depreciated or not. I, have to, I would have to look into it. I, I don't know how. And how old is the one at pump station six? How old? Yeah. It's the same, t same vintage. Same vintage, so 19 years? Yeah. Okay. I watched it go in. <laughs> Getting old. So, um, fully depreciated, I think, uh, either 20 or 25 years is a life given to something like that. Is it? So yeah, I usually I... figured it was 20 years. Yeah, usually I give a, ge a generator... <laughs> Uh, a 25-year life cycle. Mm -hmm. And that generator, I assume, exercises once a week? Once a month. Once a month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 500 hours over 19 years. So it's not it's a, a lot. lot of exercising. It's not a lot of... No, no, no. It's mostly exercising, probably. Oh, yeah. That, that it's accumulated that low amount of hours, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. And one yeah. of the advantages, and Josh pointed this out to me, of keeping the older... This generator... Renovating this generator is we avoid a lot of the... Um, the newer electronics and DAF and um, that they're requiring now with a lot of all the new generators. Our, our rental unit actually has all those additional features on it, which I did look at the buying that the rental unit. I asked Caterpillar if they would sell me that unit, and uh, they gave me a price of three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, Three hundred fifty-three to be exact. But. Well, they can get a lot of money for forty-two hundred dollars a week. <laughs> <clears throat> so, other questions? Go ahead, Ben. I, it just sounds like you guys have uh, done a good analysis of it, and I support the conclusion that you guys came to. Um, I had a question about. The fifty thousand that does not include the forty two hundred dollars per week. Rental. That does not that that forty two hundred dollar per week rental would be consistent throughout. I, I think any of these options that we go down is a, a, a two month scenario. Okay. Um, I think you know we might be able to shave shave a week or two here or there, and and I don't think it matters which which way we go. They're all going to take time to get, get into place. Right. So and the repair happens on site? The, the, the generator actually has to be removed from the generator piece, okay. has to be removed from the, decoupled from the engine, hauled out. Cody uh, rigging is, is actually okay. been to the site and putting together an estimate to do that. 
and I believe it's actually being hauled down to Connecticut to be rewound. All right. And I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but I'm just curious, <clears throat> given my situation. So uh, <laughs> I need to know how, um, how do you think this thing self-destructed? You said it, the exciter got more excited than normal? Is that what it was? It, I don't know. The mechanic doesn't know. He just said sometimes it happens. The, the reason I ask is just for a repeat performance. Yeah. How do we avoid that in the future? You know, he, his con initial concern was um, power factor. And uh, what the plant is running at, we, we typically run at a negative 0.8 power factor and uh, that I know that doesn't mean much to anyone outside in the listening audience um, but that's due to the VFDs uh, but that you know I talked to the engineer and she said no no, no that's about right right on the money where you should be and uh, the mechanic came back and said he actually uh, looked into it and said the exact same thing that that power factor was actually right where it ought to be Okay. So it wasn't anything strange happening at the plant from the power demand that drove it? Who knows? I mean, the way the power went out, I, it was very, um, you know, Abrupt. jumpy. Oh, oh, oh. It, it came in and came out, came in, came out, came in, came out, okay. came in, came out. And maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Could have been. Could have been. Any warranty with the repair? I don't know. I could ask. I just, I just I don't sitting know. here thinking about, you know, the potential warranty with a new unit versus the repairs to an older unit. Is there any potential to get a warranty on that, whatever work is done to the new, or to the existing generator? Yeah. I'll ask. And the other thought is insurance. Would insurance cover this? I don't think so, being as old as it is, but I also have not even thought about that, but I will ask. Just you follow. might be able to utilize I've already it. asked. What do they say? Uh, yeah, this is covered. Mine is covered. Yours is covered. See, mine is just an equipment failure. For the listening audience, Nick, who actually is the superintendent in the Wells Sanitary District, his generator also failed this week. In but a his, more dramatic fashion. But his actually caught fire, so that's why it would be an insurance claim. Yes. So, but you never know. Ask the question might be a good answer. I'll definitely ask that question. Cool. And I feel like I've been riding two horses at the same time trying mm -hmm. to figure this whole thing out, so. Understandable. Understandable. <laughs> so. Any more questions for the superintendent? Yes, Mike. I, I have, is uh, your uh, mic on? Yes, it is. It is this time. Um, so, Dave, you said that the rental duration would be the same no matter what other three scenarios um, you use. So, so they gave you what, like an eight-week lead time for one of these 250 kilowatt generators? We could get no. We could get that generator probably up here in in a week's time. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. But then we got to schedule the rigging companies right. to move the okay. generators and get all that work done. I, I foresee that taking time and. Yeah, and I was expecting a lot longer lead time, but that's that's good. Um, and also, um, when that generator, well, actually, when all your generators exercise, I take it that's done under load. Right. Uh, yes and no. Uh, sometimes we do ex just exercise them once a month. We, what we do is we exercise our generators once a month, and that's really what the um, uh, Caterpillar, a lot of the manufacturers are suggesting. But we actually have, we don't do it automatically. I have the mechanics okay. or the operators go to the stations. Um, and start the generators and listen to them. And, okay. and, and uh, sometimes it's done under load, sometimes it's, it's not. It, it's kind of uh, uh, hit or miss. And then once a year, we actually 
um, on most of our generators, except for this one and treatment six, because they're big. We have our own um, load bank, and we will go around and load bank all the generators up to their rated kilowatts to ensure that they're able to uh, operate fully. Because right. even under load, as, as I noted here, you know, the treatment plant runs under our normal load is 175 kW, and it's a 500 kW generator. So it's, it's certainly not challenging that generator at all. So once every, I forget whether it's three or five years, we rent a load bank. Uh, we've done it, we just did it last year, I believe. This year? 2022. Um, we rented the, and this is the second time we've done it in my time here. Uh, we load bank, rented a load bank that was sufficiently sized for uh, the treatment plant in pump station six. And um, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any more questions? All right, not all in favor. Four zero, not opposed. Thank you. Any public comments? Trustee comments. I think we'll start on the right with Jay. Jason. No comments this month. Ben? Yeah, I was impressed with <clears throat> the handling of the power outage and uh, generator situation. That was uh, very uh, fast and proactive of you guys to, to deal with that. And, uh, and also, you know, that we've uh, been looking into the First Amendment audits ourselves and kind of training our staff to deal with them. And it's going to be kind of a stressful situation for staff. So I'm proud, proud of us for handling that well. Mike? Um, is your mic on? <laughs> uh, no, I, just to reiterate what Ben said, um, you know, job well done to the entire staff um, with the wastewater treatment plant uh, generator. Um, nice job. Thank you. Cool. Well, uh, the only comment I have is uh, echoing our, my fellow trustee comments. Nice, nicely done getting it done quickly. I'm impressed that CMP was up and running by 9 o'clock that morning. Uh, also impressed Cat brought a standby generator for noon or one. Nicely done. Thank you. By 10. By 10. Look at that. We got it up and running by 1. Awesome. So uh, with that, I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. All in favor? We're done. Thank you.